Hello, this LP3 training video is for close the business day, close the day. From the LP3 main uh, login screen, choose accounting and then closing. It's very, very important here that everybody is logged out of the software. Make sure that all the payments, all the loan transactions, everything has been done uh, that you're going to want to capture for the day. Um, don't forget any payments. Don't forget any other uh, loans. Make sure all of that's done. Make sure everyone is logged out of the software. If you do not have everybody get completely out of the software at this point and they do any transaction, it will not be in the closing of the day. So it's extremely important that everybody is logged completely out of the software. Once you get to this screen, confirm that all other users are logged out of the program. Say yes. Now, somebody comes in the business and they need to make a payment. You're like, okay, well, I need to stop the closing process. Make sure that you exit the closing screen. Do not go search account and take a payment. It will not show up in the closing. If somebody comes in and you need to take a payment, exit the closing screen, click on search account, pull up their account, take the payment, make sure, uh, get out of the payment screen and everything, make sure everybody is logged out of the software and you can come back to accounting and closing and then go in the software. You'll have trouble if you do not make sure everybody's logged out and do not do any transactions other than within the closing screen upon closing. So let's uh, take a look at a few uh, details of the closing screen. We have the loan transactions for the day. And in this uh, particular demo, I made a new loan, a former borrower loan, a no cash renewal, which means that uh, the customer doesn't get cash back, a borrower renew and an in full payout of an account. So I would have these examples uh, in here to go forward into closing. We, uh, at part of these loans, there was a couple of checks that uh, were given to customers for renewing their loan. Let's go ahead and start at uh, the items down below that allow you to enter additional information in your closing for accounting. So miscellaneous income. Miscellaneous income, is for instance, if you just have money that comes in that you'd wanna put inside the loan store. Say for instance, you sell some candy, uh, you're trying to raise some money, you have candy, you uh, sell some stamps from the post office so that people can mail, mail in their payments. This is where you would put that. So say you sold a candy bar for $5. You go ahead and uh, put that $5 amount, candy bar. Just gives you a way of being able to enter where cash came into the business in, in a way that's not standard. So, okay. You'll see that this miscellaneous income, $5 candy bar was entered in there also. So let's take a look at withdrawals. What is withdrawal? Um, withdrawal is where you take money from your bank account into your cash drawer. So you have your uh, bank account uh, right here where it shows how much is in your bank and then you actually have uh, the money that's in your cash drawer for your cash count, your physical money at the branch each day. So let's go ahead and click on withdrawal and we're going to say um, what, what you'll physically do in this transaction. So we're gonna go get $250 from the bank to bring in for our cash drawer uh, for um, you know like some small bills and change. So you would say $250 and then right here You'd put uh, small bills, change, and OK. So this tells the software that I'm going to go to the bank, or I went to the bank and got $250, and it's now in my cash drawer. So it's a withdrawal from the bank to your cash drawer. What you physically do is you go to the bank, use a withdrawal slip, and get $250 out uh, for your uh, small bills and change. And then you will come put that money that you count after you get it from the bank, you put it into your cash drawer, and this is how you tell the software to do it. And that was the what you do physically to get the money from the bank to your cash drawer. Okay, deposits. Deposits, uh, most companies will deposit the uh, cash collected at the end of each day. So right here, you'll see cash collected. When you start out the day, um, you'll have a, a starting cash amount. 
and then throughout the day as people come and pay you you'll have a cash collected amount so a lot of people will put the cash collected amount as a deposit which takes it from your drawer and puts it uh, from from the system software drawer and puts it into the bank um, so what you'll do um, you'll click on deposit and right here we have 898.74 which is what we collected today so 8 74 and then we'll put on there say deposit and for instance today's date an example of okay we're gonna go and do a deposit so we're gonna take this money to the bank so in the software you tell it I'm gonna take uh, eight hundred ninety eight dollars and seventy four cents and with the memo it's deposit and for today's date okay so what you have to physically do is get a deposit slip for your bank count out that eight hundred and ninety eight dollars and seventy four cents Put that transaction on the bank deposit slip and then go to the bank and deposit the money now. In the software, the software knows that it went to the bank. So you have to now physically take the money and put it in the bank and then it will reconcile. So check. Throughout the day, you may write checks for various things like to pay rent or utilities or other things like that. During the day, not going into the closing screen you would go to account and check register do not go to account and check register when you have the closing screens open if you go and enter a check in a check register when the closing screens are open it will not show up on your closing so if you need to do a check at closing you click on check and a uh, check number Say 1313, pay, pay cable bill, charter amount, say $150. Now, you'll have an expense category. These will all be defined, office expenses or um, insurance or rent or whatever. Let's just say that, uh, for instance, our office expenses are on expense number seven. So you'll, you'll choose the expense category for this particular check, the amount, and OK. Again, do not do any checks from accounting and check register when you have the closing screen open, or it will not show up here in the closing, and it will not be in your closing at the end of the day. So voucher. Voucher, um, if you need to go to the post office, say, and buy some stamps that cost $25 or $30 or $40, you need to take some money out of this, out of your cash drawer. Uh, you need to tell the system, hey, I took some money out of the cash drawer. So, for instance, I'm going to take $25 out, and I've got an expense category, say, for postage, maybe the expense category was 8 these expense categories will be defined for your particular branch. But just for demo purposes, I'm taking $25 out. My expense category eight for our business is office supplies. So I'm going to say, OK. Now I have this voucher. I took $25 out, and I go get stamps. Well, the stamps cost $20. I have $5 left. Well, I need to put that $5 back into the cash drawer, into the system. So we would come over here to cash in. We have $5 that was left over from buying the stamps. And you want to make sure that you always use the same expense category that it came out of for office expenses, for instance, what we used before, expense eight. And we're putting the $5 back in under the same expense. That was an example of voucher to take money out to pay for something. And then cash in, which uh, you'll have, you know, money to come back and go back in. Now you have miscellaneous income, which was had nothing to do with the business per se, uh, maybe fundraise or whatever. Uh, that's for something other than business related. But if you're if the cash came out of the business and you need to track it, and you've got a receipt for twenty dollars, and you got five dollars left, then you need to put it back in. And since it came out of expense category eight. You cash in, put the $5 remaining back in to the system through uh, expense category and cash in. So 
cash in. So if you want to take money, say, from home office, home office transfers $5,000 to your bank account. Well, in order to tell the system that you have had uh, money come from your home office, it's two steps that you'll have to go through to do that. Uh, first, you would uh, choose cash in. We'll say the amount is $5,000. Expense category, 19, which is ICS, DCS. So that's money coming in and out uh, from, say, home office and um, that's all you have to put in there. You don't have to have an expense about this. It's just the amount, expense category, ICS, DCS 19, and then okay. Now this tells the system that you have $5,000 that came in, but it actually doesn't know that it's in the bank now. What would have happened, the home office would have wired the money or sent you an email, hey, we put money in your account. So there's a second step to actually taking money from a home office. First is cash in 5,000 with ICS DCS 19 being the expense category you choose. Now the next is you have to do a deposit. So you're actually saying that you're taking this $5,000 and the memo could be like um, the transaction number from the, um, the wire transfer or a check number that they maybe sent you a check for the money. So it'll be one of those uh, two things. So Memo will have that. So now you've actually done the two-step process, which is cash in at the 5000 at ICS DCS 19, and then deposit, which you have a, um, a note for your transaction number, check number, whatever, for uh, the money transfer. So this now has gone over uh, closing and then doing additional transactions, accounting transactions that are outside of the loan transactions within your closing screen. And this is part of the closing transaction screen, which is the one of two screens uh, that you will come to when closing. So this is all done. We don't have anything else to enter. Continue closing. And please keep in mind that it is extremely important that you do not um, let anyone get in the software at any of the other stations while you're doing the closing. I'm going to go ahead at this point, make sure that, well, before you go in the closing, make sure that all your cash has been counted, everything is exact, um, wouldn't count the cash after you're in closing because you might get hung up for something, but make sure all of your cash is counted. Uh, you have the right amounts, you've tracked everything down before you come into closing at all. Here you'll enter your cash count. I'm just going to enter zero here for demo purposes, but what you do is make sure that you enter the amount you count. Do not lie to the system. Do not tell it what it expects to see. Some We have settings that allow you to see what your cash should be. Uh, some companies have that. Some do not show what their cash should be so, it's, should be so that you, uh, you know, the amount that you count is going to be the amount you put in. Count your cash twice. Make, make sure that it's the right amount before you come here. So the second part, which is closing a cash count screen, I'm going to go ahead and enter the cash count amount and then continue closing. Drawers have been balanced, continue closing the business day. Yes. Close the month. Okay. If it's not the last, if, if, if you will start seeing the message close the month when it gets within a couple of days of the end of the month. If it is not the last day of the month, do not close the month. If you close the month early, going to have to be a lot of stuff to backtrack that decision. But if you um, if if you see this close of the month and it is the last day, it would say yes, but if it's not the last day, say no. Now if you say yes here, it asks you again, are you sure you want to close the end of the month? Because you do not want to close the end of the month unless it's the last day of the month. So we've actually made it to where if you're saying you're closing the end of the month, you're not going to just bypass this message. You have to say it a couple of times. We want to avoid, you want to avoid closing the end of the month unless it's the last day. So it's not the last day. I'm going to go ahead and say no. The system will now close out. There'll be uh, numerous reports that the system will generate, a uh, delinquency report, a uh, period report, aging report, predicted report, which is predicted uh, charge-offs 
between now and the end of the month if uh, nothing changes. So let me wait till this finishes. What we're going to actually look at uh, quickly after the closing is the period report. A couple of items just for reference on the period report to take a look at. After you close the day, the period report will have a snapshot of the day, a snapshot of the transactions, uh, loans, and the aggregate data um, for closing. couple things that you'll want to make note of when you're viewing say yesterday's close uh, closing period report and today's closing period report would be your bank balance your outstanding amount of money you have outstanding in loans and here we have the the close of day completed so let me go ahead and take you into the period reports uh, to pull to pull up the period report which is a snapshot of the closing you click on report and then accounting reports and then period now until you close the day there will not be a period report available the last close the day will be the last period report available so what you would do when you're looking at one day to the next today is 828 828 20 so we generated a period report for the day and we can pull it up you have your bank balance 1772036 you have uh your uh, outstanding balance 4670935 you have your cash should be which your cash count for today which you'll start tomorrow number of accounts and then transactions that happen for the day now if you look um the 1772036 let's go ahead and pull up the previous day's close which the last close 1372162 now we took $5000 in from home office as part of the transactions which is you know what caused our uh, bank balance to go up plus we gave out some loans which then caused it to go down a little bit so you can review your transactions for the day you can pull up your period report from the previous day pull up your period report from today's closing and then uh, take a look and compare them both uh, we'll do uh, another extensive training on balancing your bank account. Uh, we'll do training on uh, cash count. And we'll do extensive training on separate videos uh, for uh, the, the transactions that made up the closing. How do you do all those transactions that then can uh, give you an example of how to then go in to do a closing. So that is close of day. Thank you very much.